Okay, we're going to get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first webinar on a series of express 30-minute webinars on Phoenix Wind and Land, brought to you by Sertara University. These express webinars will take place monthly in the upcoming six months. My name is Anna Henry, and I am the training director for Sertara University. To kick off this series today, I will present some tips on how to save time creating Phoenix plots. I will be using version 8.1 of Phoenix Wind and Land, but I will try to let you know the version that each tip is applicable to. Since this is the first webinar of this series, I want you to be aware that all of you are muted and that at the end of the presentation, there will be a five minute questions and answers. So if you have a question, please type it in in a Q&A panel. To access the Q&A panel, you can use the icons at the bottom of the web access screen. The goal of this webinar is to show you some tips for creating plots in Phoenix Wind and Land that could save you some time and make you more efficient in your everyday work. So here's the list of four needs that you may have related to plots. For example, um, you may always want to have some default fonts for your plots when you create Phoenix plots. You may also want to have your data mapped directly by default when you're creating plots. Uh, most likely you want to reuse your plots, so if there's plots that you like, you may want to reuse them. And there's other things that you may want to do, like for example, you always want your access labels in a manner that are more user friendly. So I will be presenting some of these. The first tip that I will show you is how to set up default formats for your plot. The Phoenix system has a factory default for these that you might not want and you might need something else different. So to create graphs in different default fonts, you could, I will show you a tip to do that. And then you will get fonts that are slightly different. So here I have selected a bit of a strange font to make it obvious that a change has occurred. And this will be the first tip. Okay, then I will also show you how to, uh, how to have the mappings panel of a plot automatically assign column names. So when you first open Phoenix in an XY plot, there's usually no automatic mappings. And you know, it takes some time for you to decide what's your X or your Y. So I will show you how to be able to then automatically have your X and Y plotted, uh, mapped right here to a name that you might be interested in using. Okay, so that would be a second tip that we would talk about today. Okay, sorry, the slides are jumping a little bit on me. I'm just going to go back to this one, which will be the next step. This, uh, I will show you how to create templates like this. So this is what we call a spaghetti plot where every profile is, doesn't have any type of markers, it's just thin lines. So if you're interested in, um, in having spaghetti plots like this and, and apply a template, I will show you that. And we'll go even a little bit further on how to use templates to create a spaghetti plots that have a mean profile. So in this profile, you see that there's a blue mean line, okay, and it's overlaid. So I will show you how to create those quickly. For access tick marks that look like this, that has this type of format, I will show you a tip to correct these so they're not in the exponential form. I will reinforce templates by showing you a different type of plot, like this XY plot with X categorical for a crossover study. And uh, how to overlay the mean and median to the right and left of the data. So here you can see the mean is uh, the red, and then the purple is the median to the left. So one is to the right and one is to the left. Okay, so if any of these tips uh, look interesting to you, please stick around and I will demonstrate how to do this using Phoenix when now land. Okay, so I'm going to switch now to Phoenix.
Cheryl, can you please confirm that you can see my Phoenix? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So I'm gonna magnify it a slightly. Okay, so you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna be working with three data sets. They come from the uh, examples data set that ships with Phoenix. One of them is this profile data set. It's a crossover study for a few subjects. I believe there's only six. It has capsule and tablet. So by crossover, I mean that the same subject gets the two formulations. We also have another two-period crossover that is very similar, but it has more subjects. So this one has up to 10. And then we might work with this other one that a single profile, so every subject only has some time concentration data and there's different genders. So we'll be mostly working with profiles and then applying some of the template to the other one. I've already done some of the work here and they're in sub workflows. So for example, I want to show you here a plot, any plot that you create has some defaults. So this format, this font that is used, this type of, of formatting, it's all already um, set up for you. But if you don't want this, the tip of today is how to show you how to change these in all plots. So not just XY plots, but all the plots in Phoenix. So to do this, you go to edit and go to preferences. So we'll be talking about edit preferences a lot today. And in here, you will see that there's something called plotting defaults, okay? Once you click on plotting defaults, you will see a plot right here that shows you these defaults as well as what you can manage. So you can, for example, not want a plot that is a square. You may want it to be rectangular. So maybe you want to increase the width to like 350 and you click out of it, you will not see that you have a rectangular plot. Okay, and there are other things that you can change here. Again, this is applicable to all plots in Phoenix. Other things that are interesting is how to change, for example, the title font. So you can see here, there's a title, and I can select font, title, change font, and pick another font. Let's pick this one that is quite obvious. And then you can change the, the font style as well as the size. So maybe I'll make it bigger to 14 and click OK. Now you can see that this is gonna be the default title. Let's do that for a couple more. For the lattice title, I will also change it and make it regular 12. And we'll do it one more time for the access labels. So any other plot that I create from now will have these default fonts. Okay, so I'll make these also 12. Okay, so once you have made some decisions on your plotting defaults, you need to click apply and then okay. Now this won't change something that has already been created, but if I go back to my profiles data set and I send it to a plot, let's say an XY plot, I put it in this sub workflow profiles and click select, you will now um, see that after I make my selections, time, concentration, I'm gonna group by subject, and uh, we're gonna, because it's crossover, we'll do formulation as page source. Okay, so I have run this, and you can see that the defaults are now being shown. Okay, so that, that was one tip. The other tip is that, as you saw when I started the plot, these mappings, um, you need to map it every time. And you might be interested on in having some of the names that you use very often uh, mapped automatically. So this is the next step. It is again in Edit, Preferences, and it's this third option, Mapping Context. You can open the little plus sign and see that we have these global contents and then we have some context association. So the first thing you need to do is tell the program what are the names of these columns that you usually use, okay? So we go to Global Contents here and the first one that we will do for the XY plot will be the dependent. So we're gonna go here, I'm gonna say, what are my dependent variables? What names do that do, you know, can I use for dependent variables? I'm gonna expand that so you can see the add button, okay? So I click add, and for dependent variables that is in PK concentration, I can type something like conk, and I can add other things like concentration, I can even add maybe CP. So any names that you use for concentration, you can put in here. 
And we will do the same for independent. That's your independent variable. And I can add something like time, which is usually our independent variable when we do PK. Okay, so once you've done that, you have one more step, and that is to go to the context associations and say, in what object in Phoenix I want to apply these. And as you can see, there's many objects. Today, I'm only going to show you the XY plot. So in the XY plot, you can expand it, and you can, and you can see that we have now all these options. So for dependent variable, you need to highlight it first. Okay? So my dependent here is going to be my Y and maybe potentially my Y2. So I'm going to check those two. And for independent, I'm going to go and highlight independent first and then say it's always my X. So what I'm doing is any time that I open an XY plot and I have an X that has the, the name time, it's going to map it automatically. And if it has a Y that has those names that we enter, Kong, CP, or concentration, it's going to map it automatically. Once you're done doing that, just click OK. Okay? So we'll go back and do exactly the same thing we just did. I go to Profile, Send to, Plotting, and I'll pick the XY plot. Uh, we'll put it right in the Profile sub-workflow, and you now will see that time and concentration are mapped automatically. Okay? So this is what I wanted to show you here for these tips. And then we're going to move on to talking about templates. Okay? So for the first template that I'm going to show you, we're going to be discussing about creating a template for spaghetti plot. So those are thin lines for every profile. Okay? So when you create plots, you always need to start from somewhere. So you do need to do the initial work, but it's to create that plot that you like. And then once it's already created, then you can um, save it as a template. And I'm going to show you this right now. Okay. So the first thing that you will see here is that in this plot, first I need to create it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do the same uh, decisions that I made before where formulation is sort and group is subject. And we are going to run this. It now has the defaults on formats that I had selected, but I want to do a couple of things. First, I want to make sure that my Y is in logarithmic scale. I also want to make sure that I don't have any type of markers, okay? So I go to the graph name, concentration versus time. I go to quick styles, and I uncheck show markers. And I also don't want color, so I'm going to say I'm going to uncheck group by color and even group by line, so I have all of them being solid. In this case, the uh, legend doesn't really make sense because you cannot distinguish between subjects. So I can go here under options, legend, and just say I do not want to make it visible. So you make it invisible. Okay. So I'm doing pretty well. It's almost what I wanted. But there's a couple of things that I want to. I don't like this concentration to be called conch. I may want it to be uh, spelled out as concentration. But if we're thinking about a template or something that we're going to apply, we need to be sure that we don't hard code units, for example, because otherwise when you apply this to another uh, data set that has different units, is it, if it's hard coded, then the units would be incorrect. So one, another tip is to go to access right here. Select, let's just start with the X and go to access label. You can see here that it picks it up from the data. But I want to hard code it. So there is right on the bottom this insert label tags. Okay. When you click on it, what it tells you is this XY and X unit. XY means I'm going to read it from the data set and it's going to be whatever variable is mapped to X and the units that correspond to that. And instead, I want to say, well, don't pick the number from the data set and always type time, but pick the unit from the data. And then, of course, we can center it and we can give it a different type of font if we wanted to. Okay, if I'm doing this right now, I would need to select the font that I want. So let's pick something else. 
well, we'll just leave it like that. So it's, it's pretty obvious. And we'll do the same for this project, uh, for this template. We'll do the same for the Y. So for the Y, you select Y on the axis. You click the axis label, insert text right here. It changes it. So instead of conch being red, it's going to be concentration. Okay. So again, what I'm saying is that if you plan on using these over and over again, you can spend some time uh, making this plot the way that you want it. Okay. All right. So now that I have this, I'm going to go to the setup and you will see that there is this kind of like it's a diskette with a little wheel in there and you hover over it. It will say that it's safe ob object settings. This is new in Phoenix 8 and 8.1. And uh, not in previous versions, you couldn't do that. There were other ways to do it. I can give tips for that uh, if anyone is interested. But we, what you can do now is for a single plot, you can click on this and you can now save it with a name. So for example, for this one, we can call it a spaghetti plot, okay? Uh, notice that you can even set it as default, so every time it will apply this format, every time you do that. But I don't want to do this. I want to make the, my decision myself. So now if I say OK, you will see that in the dropdown, there's this spaghetti plot available for um, these object settings. So let's practice this. As I told you before, we had another data set that was crossover. It's this two-period crossover. I'm going to select it here. I'm going to send it to a plot, an XY plot. We'll put it in this other uh, sub workflow. And once I get here, it does remember some of the mappings, but I'll go ahead and use this drop down, select a spaghetti plot. It's going to ask me if I'm sure I want to apply it. I say yes. And if it finds the data, it will try to map it. In this case, the names were different, so I'm manually going to set the patient is my group and treatment is my sort. I'm going to run it, and you will see that it has already applied the same template. Notice also the units. The units for the other data set were micrograms per mil, and in this case, uh, it's nanograms because it's reading these from the data. Okay? All right, good. So. This might be new to you, and it's these object settings that you can select here. Now, there's many more than you can select, so it's, there's no need to just have one. You may want to have linear plots. Uh, you may want to have just single profiles in logarithmic. So you can just select uh, any, you know, any object setting that you think you will reuse. Now, one caution is that object settings work really well within an object and it's available for every object in, in Phoenix, but they also work well when the source data is only one. If you have either maybe steps to get to what you want, or maybe there's a source that come from different sources, so not just from these, uh, these two period crossover, maybe I needed descriptive statistics or something, then it doesn't work so well. Um, and I'm going to show you how to handle those situations. So the next one that we're going to do is the same spaghetti plot, but we're going to overlay the mean. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead first and just make a sub workflow under profile. So this is a new sub workflow. Okay? And then we're going to call this spaghetti with mean. Okay? Spaghetti with mean. And we are going to create the plot that I just showed you. The first thing that you need in order to have mean data is to do descriptive statistics on your data. So I go to, back to my profiles and I send it to a descriptive stats object. Okay? We'll put it right in this sub workflow that we just created. And we'll make some decisions. So we want to summarize concentration at each time point uh, for each formulation. Okay? So we don't need all of these. So basic statistics is all we need, and we can even just select the mean, but I'll just leave that as basic statistics here, and we run it. Now we have the mean at each time point for every formulation. So we have the data that we want to plot. Okay. The next thing I can do if I want to save some time is just go ahead and copy. So Control-C, Control-V. 
I'm going to go ahead and copy the uh, plot that I was working with before. So all of these is already set up. Now, how do you overlay? To overlay data in a plot that comes from a different source, you need to go here in Options and highlight Plot, go to Graphs, and click Add. Notice what happened when I click Add. It opens up in the setup another mapping panel. Okay, so this is the first one where I have the individual data. And now I have this other mapping that is expecting another source data. So I can drag in here the descriptive statistics that we just created. It recognizes time. Remember how we set this for the system. And now my Y, instead of being concentration, would be the mean concentration. So scroll down a little and we pick the mean. Okay? I need to, of course, make the same decisions that I made before. So formulation is going to be my page sort. Okay? And we are ready to run this, okay? So once you execute this, you will see now that this mean has markers and it's in blue. And we can do some format just to clean this out. So to clean those, you first find the graph, which is mean versus time. The easiest way is to go to quick styles and just uncheck show markers and then go back to appearance and make some decisions on your line. So maybe instead of purple, we want it to be blue, solid, and maybe as thick as two or even three, depending on what you want, okay? So now we have this plot, which is a spaghetti plot with the mean overlaid on it. And notice that there were several steps and in the setup, there's also different sources. So instead of using the object settings as we did before, what we do here is we save everything, all these steps. And you can have many, many steps. This is also available for any object in Phoenix. So once you have a workflow that has the several steps, we can click on that workflow. And remember, I made a sub workflow. I could have gone to a higher level. But just for this, I can then right click and say, save workflow template. So this is a full template workflow. Um, it will go to a default, and you can pick uh, where you want this to be saved. And I can just say this is a template for a spaghetti plot with mean. Okay? Give it some very descriptive name so you know what you're doing next time around. Okay, so now I have saved it. And what I want to show you is how to apply it again to another data set. Let's say... Um, you did all this work, you saved this uh, template, and now you want to apply it to another data set. So we're going to apply it to this two-period crossover. Uh, to do this, you will select where you want to put this template, and you're going to load it. So you right-click and go to Load Workflow Template. You click on it, and you select the template that you had just, in our case, we just saved. Notice the extension. This extension is uh, the new extension for version 8 and 8.1, but this exists in previous versions. It just has a different extension, the WNLT. Okay, so what I'm showing you in this step can be done with any version of Phoenix. Okay, so we say open now. Select the location where you want to put it. And it has opened this sub-workflow, but notice that if I click on the plot, there's nothing here. Okay. Oh, yeah, it has actually remembered the thing because it's still mapped. Okay, so what I want to do, though, in the statistics, I don't want to use the old data. I want to use the new data, the new two-period crossover. So I can just drag it to it. I can make my decisions here, okay? And in this case, my sort is treatment. I can go to the highest level and run it. One thing that I didn't show you, and sorry, there's, uh, there's one step that I, that I forgot to do that would have really simplified this. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to start again. Uh, we're going to delete these, and I'm going to show you another good tip for um, this. Okay, so notice that in this case, we are using a data that starts here. It's profiles. It's used for descriptive stats, and that, that is used for the, for the plot. 
So one really good thing to do when you're going to create a workflows is to add a data link. So every time, all you have to do is ta uh, then map the data once. So to do that, I right click on this diagram and I select to connect ex external sources to data links. So what that, what that does is to say, okay, the data that I'm going to need is going to be this data. Okay, and I'm just going to rename it and call it input data. Okay. It's uh, 1025 so, now. Okay, so this will be the last one that I show because this is the Express webinar. Okay, so in here you may want to say I don't need a dose, so I'm just going to remove it. Okay, I don't need sequence, I don't need period, uh, but I do need this that I can call by variable or something. You can change it if you want, but those are the minimum that I need. So I'm going to rerun this, so now it's all up to date, and we're going to save it again. Okay, so we have the plot. We're going to save these again as a, a safe workflow template. We'll call it the same. We'll just overwrite it. Okay. And now when we apply it to this other data set and we load this workflow template, you will see that it has that data link. Okay. So data links are important when you're saving workflow templates because now all I have to do is take my new data map it here and make the decisions of what is my subject. Well, it's called patient. What is my formulation, which is a bivariable? It's this, in this case, is treatment and concentration is CP. Once you've done that, then you can run the full workflow and it will know how to map everything. So now this is the new data. You can see that there's a lot more subjects in, in here, okay? So for capsule and for tablet, and there's a lot more data also for time. Okay, so this is all the time that we have today. I hope uh, that you really got the idea of a couple of things. First, the preferences, then also the templates. There's two things to know about templates. You can either do templates by using the object settings for individual, or you can do word for templates if there are more than one step or if a plot has sources that is more than one. All right, so I'm going to now um, move back to the presentation. And if you have any questions, we're going to open the Q&A. Uh, please type them in the Q&A box. And while you do this, I will let you know that the next uh, two webinars that are coming up are based on pharmacokinetics uh, on toxic, is PK on toxicology analysis. And um, they're going to be two parts. The first part is going to be creating plots in Phoenix and also using the R software. And the second part, part two, that would be in March, is the benefits of preclinical sparse NCA and population modeling. So I hope that you can join us for those sessions. All right, so we have a couple of minutes. Uh, let me see if I can find some of the questions. There's really only one question. Oh, okay. Um, okay, they're asking me on how to show the mean and median in crossover studies, and since um, I didn't get to it, but I'm going to, yes, show you that very quickly, okay? So I'm going to go back to sharing the application of Phoenix, okay? And in this case, I'm going to use an, uh, some NCA, okay? So the results of an NCA is already executed, and we're going to use this final parameter worksheet, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to a plot that is not an XY, but an XY plot categorical. I will put it back in this profile. Okay. And um, for X categorical, you need to pick an X that is categorical. So we'll pick something like a form, for example. Okay. And then we want to put the estimate in there. And we may want to sort by parameters because we have many parameters in it. Okay. So when I run this, you see that the data is for each parameter is presented here. Okay. And we can make a Y um, on out, out of scale best. So you can see it a little bit better. All right. The data, we may want to connect it. So we may want to have this line um, available. 
Oh, okay. So I didn't put subjects. I need to put subject as a group. So let's just rerun that. Okay. So now it's connecting it. When I click here, it will connect by subject. All right. So the point was to bring the mean to the right or the left. And for that, of course, we need to have some descriptive statistics. Okay. So we will go back to our NCA, final parameters, and we will send it to a descriptive step. Okay. From here, I want to summarize the estimates for each parameter and for each formulation. Okay. So now I have the mean and I have the median. So to overlay, you're going to use a very similar tip as I did before, right? You can go to plot and graphics, and this time we're going to overlay two things. So we're going to click. Let me go to the setup so you can see it. Click add, it opens one. Click add again, and it opens another. So the first mapping will be the scripted statistics that I just generated. And you're going to say you want your X. This is your formulation. Okay? And then you want to overlay the mean. So we click on mean. And you can even overlay standard deviation. So I can go, I want the standard deviation arrow bar right here, up and down. And then for the other one, I want the median. So I take descriptive statistics again, put the formulation as X, and then this time I'll pick the median. Now that you might already know that, but the tip is how do we make them just kind of go to the right and to the left? So when I do this, okay, hold on. There's, I didn't do the same sorting for the medians. I need to make sure that this is set up right. Page sort. Needs to be okay. Let me just view the source for a second. All right. All right. So when I did the descriptive statistics here, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna do in these a little bit, a little bit quicker. When we did the descriptive statistics, uh, we didn't put the parameters. So I need to make sure I have parameters here so I can uh, overlay everything correctly. So now when I go back to my plot, I have the parameter that I need to sort because they were not matching the sorts. Every time you overlay, your sorts need to match. Okay. Make sure that this is set up to the median. Yes. All right, so now everything is on top of each other. So the tip here, and that's new in eight, is that you can now move things. For, for example, for my mean, it has this offset, and I can move it to the right by, and you can just try whatever number works. For example, 14 moves it to the right. And then for the median, I want to go to the left, so I have to put a negative number. So negative 14 will move it to the left. And then you can work on making these appearance of these be different or be um, something else of a color that you may want. Okay, as so you can see now I made that blue or, or black. All right, so um, I know this is quick, but hopefully it gave you a good idea. Uh, once you've done this work, you can also save it as a template and apply it to all the data that might come later on. Okay, so I hope I've uh, answered that question. I went a little bit over time. Uh, we won't have any more time for more questions, but if there are questions in the Q&A that I did not get to answer, I will, uh, I will make sure to send everybody some, some answers written. So thank you so much for attending this session that is presented by Sertara University. University. And you can visit us at www.sertarauniversity.com. And if you have any more needs for your uh, for training in professional development in PKPD, we ho I hope to see you next month at the second Phoenix Wind Express webinar, and we will adjourn now, and you can disconnect.